This video will discuss how to design environmental engineering concrete structures and visual foundation according to the ACI 350 design specification. Let's get started. In this example, we will look at designing the foundation slab for a 20 foot by 40 foot rectangular concrete tank. The tank can hold 20 feet of water and will be backfilled with 7 feet of soil above the top of the slab. In Visual Foundation, we've already drawn the foundation slab and the walls. The walls in the foundation slab are both 16 inches thick. The foundation slab has a double mat bar configuration, and the top layer outer bars and the bottom layer outer bars are both set to the bars in the x direction. We have a 2 inch top cover and a 3 inch bottom cover. We will start out by specifying number 6 bars at 12 inches on center in the X and Y direction for both the top mat and bottom mat. Next, let's apply the loads to the structure and set up the load combinations. Add self weight is set to yes for both the slab and the walls in the model, and there is nothing left to add in the dead load service case. Switching to the fluid service case, let's draw a rectangular load and apply the fluid load to the foundation slab and sign up the tank walls. We'll set the magnitude of the uniform pressure to 62.4 for the fluid density times 20 for the fluid depth. The pressure has a negative sign so that the fluid acts downward, pushing the structure into the ground. Next, let's go to the load case manager and create a factor load combination. Let's add a 1.4D plus 1.4F combination for the full tank case, and we will set the design category to strength LRFD. Switching to the analysis result view, we can look at moments in both the MX and MY directions. We can also click and drag to cut through the slab to see graphs for, say, the plate moment resultants MY at a particular location. Switching to the foundation design view, we'll switch the design specification from ACI 318.19 to ACI 350.20. Upon switching the code, we see that the environmental structures section appears. For our case, let's set the top exposure to severe and leave the bottom exposure set to normal. We will leave the X restraint and Y restraint both set to normal. We will specify the section length in the X direction to 40 feet and specify the section length in the Y direction to 20 feet. For now, we will set the minimum seal ratio to none, which we will revisit at the end. Looking at the project status, we see that the slab flexural steel fails, and we have plate design errors. Clicking on plate design errors provides an error message that says unable to calculate the combined load factor gamma, analyze unfactored cases, or to find the gamma override in the parameters. Going back to the load case manager, we see that there is no option to analyze the service cases. We can, however, create both a dead custom combination and a fluid custom combination that both have a load factor of 1. We will set both to no design because we don't want to design for these cases. We just want the program to analyze these cases so that it can determine the gamma value. Now, after the program runs, we see that the slab flexural steel passes. If we look at the design table for slab flexural bottom Y, we see that for our case, gamma is set to 1.4. For this case, the serviceability limit controls since the code reference in the report points us to the section of ACI 350 that discusses the maximum stresses allowed for reinforcement of environmental concrete structures. Another case that we might want to consider in our design is the situation where the tank is empty but the groundwater is at grade. In this situation, the water pressure will act upwards, essentially trying to make the tank float. In the load case manager, let's create another service case called GW for groundwater and set the load service source to fluid.
we'll set the magnitude of the uniform pressure to 62.4 for the fluid density times 7 plus 1.333 for the depth to the bottom of the slab. The pressure has a positive sign so that the fluid acts upward, trying to cause the structure to float. Next, let's go to the Load Case Manager and create a factored load combination. Let's add a 1.4D plus 1.4GW combination for the empty tank case, and we will set the design category to Strength LRFD. Again, we see that we have plate design errors since, as we learned previously, we need to analyze the surface cases to calculate gamma. The dead load case is already added, so we just need to add another factor load combination for the groundwater case with the design category set to no design. After adding this case, we see that the finite element analysis failed. The analysis is unable to converge for the groundwater case since there is nothing to prevent the model from uplifting as there is a large uplift force and no resisting force since gravity does not act in the service case. In this situation, we will need to specify a value for gamma rather than relying on the program to calculate it automatically. To do this, let's first remove the dead, fluid, and groundwater combination. Then let's go to the foundation design view and enable the override gamma parameter and then manually set the gamma value to 1.4. Now we see that the finite element analysis runs without issue, but we see that the slab flexural steel fails. Looking at the design table, we see that the unity value for the top Y bars is just above 1. We will increase the bar size from number 6 to number 7, which causes the design to pass. Now that the bars are adequate for flexure, let's turn on the minimum steel check. Now we see that the top and bottom bars in the X direction don't quite pass the minimum steel requirements. From a constructability perspective, it is probably best to simply increase the bar size throughout to number 7 bars rather than leaving the bottom bars in the Y direction set to 6. Now we see that all of the checks pass and our design is complete. In just a few minutes, we've used Visual Foundation to design the foundation slab for an environmental structure. For the wall design, we could use a program like Concrete Bending, or alternatively, we could design the entire structure in visual analysis. We hope the integration of the ACI 350 design specification aids you in designing environmental structural engineering projects. Thanks for watching and have a great day.